What's good, internet? My name is Attack Slug, and welcome to my WWE Fastlane 2019 predictions video. As always, let me know who you think is going to win at Fastlane down in the comments below. We have seven matches on, on the main card thus far as of Thursday morning, and one match on the kickoff show. That match being Rey Mysterio versus Andrade. And why is that on the kickoff? Well, I think that this match is not going to have an actual conclusion because it needs to happen on a grander stage at WrestleMania. Like, that feud should end at Mania, therefore Fastlane is a roadblock, has some kind of an inconclusive DQ or nonsense finish or schmoz or run-in or something to get it all the way to WrestleMania. Having a clean finish here does not help anybody, and therefore I hope there is an inconclusive finish, and we get this match at WrestleMania. Now, if I was going to offer a suggestion for what kind of match would make it a big deal for WrestleMania, I would say hair versus mask. But I don't think they'll do that. Anyway, that's the kickoff. It deserves better, but it is what it is. Anyway, main card. On to the main card here. We have your Raw Tag Team Titles, your champions, The Revival, versus... Alex Black and Ricochet versus Gable and Rue. Now, importantly here, Black and Ricochet do not have a brand yet. They aren't on Raw or SmackDown. They're kind of on both. So, I don't see them winning here even with all of the momentum they have because they don't have a brand yet. Like, they could have them win here, but the Revival, like, literally just won those belts. And you want them to stick around, right? You want them to be the cornerstone of your Raw tag division as a great tag team as they are, so why have them lose here? I think the only reason they made this a triple threat was to have the Revival A, not lose, but B, also not have Black and Ricochet get pinned. So Gable and Rude take the pin and the Revival win the match and retain their Raw tag team titles. Moving on, we have your SmackDown Women's Champion, the Empress of Tomorrow, Asuka versus Mandy. Mandy Rose with obviously Tony Deville in her corner. There are the S-Kicks. Not the S-Kicks anymore, but, you know, moveset's set's going to be a move set. Anyway, will it be the LaBelle lock onto Kevin Owens? It will be, but will he tap out or will he fight Owens? Fight here on Legend. Anyway, Oscar versus Mandy Rose, come on. Come on. No one is ready for Asuka. Even with the help of Sony Deville, no one is ready for Asuka. And it seems like they're going to try to build Asuka versus Lacey Evans at Mania, which, sure, fine. But there is A, zero reason to put the belt on Mandy Rose at this point, And B, zero reason for Asuka to lose this close to WrestleMania when she is the SmackDown Women's Champion. So that's an easy one. That is just... They could swerve us. But that one to me seems stupidly easy that it will be Asuka all the way in a convincing victory against Mandy Rose, as she should have. Now then, we have the first defense of the women's tag team titles. And that is your champions, the boss and hug connection, Sasha Banks and Bailey fighting off against Nia Jax and Tamina on the Raw side. As a note, they're going to have those belts defended on all three brands, supposedly. So, will this match break the curse that Sasha has where she wins a belt and then loses it on the first defense? I think these, this is the time to finally break that curse for Sasha Banks and have the boss and hug connection retain and then go defend against somebody on SmackDown, perhaps the Iconics or over on NXT, the Sky Pirates. Either way, I see Sasha and Bailey retaining the belts here, and that would be a great, great thing. But hey, they could always have the swerve and then have them win them back at Mania or whatever. Who knows, man? Who knows with wrestling anymore? Very nice, Kevin Owens. Very, very nice. Anyway, speaking of tag team titles, here it comes, folks. Here it comes. Stunner! On Daniel Bryan. Stunner! Stunner! Stop! Go! Anyway, we have your SmackDown Tag Team Champions, the Usos, 
defending against the previous champions, The Miz and Shane McMahon. Even with no more rematch clause, they goad them into it. They're going to defend against The Miz and Shane. And I feel like this is still moving towards Miz versus Shane at WrestleMania. So that breakdown happens here at Fastlane. Usos retain the titles and Miz and or Shane uh, go on against each other and build that WrestleMania match because for some reason, gotta have a match for Shane and Mania. I don't know why. That's just kind of what they do. So there is that leg lock, that vicious heel hook from Daniel Bryan. So that is kind of what's going on there with that. And yes, the Usos retain and are still your SmackDown Tag Team Champions, perhaps fighting the Hardys at Mania. Brothers versus Brothers. That'd be awesome. Make it happen. Anyway, moving on to one of the most convoluted, confusing, and annoying builds for a match that should have been simple. We have Charlotte Flair versus Becky Lynch. And according to Steph, if Becky loses... She's done. I don't know what that means. She didn't say fired. She said done. So just out of mania entirely or either way, if Becky wins, which she will, it becomes a triple threat between Ronda, Charlotte, and Becky. And that's the story they're going to tell here. You can't not have Becky Lynch at WrestleMania. This is totally a shoe in that didn't even need to happen in the first place. Because the only reason you added Charlotte was to have them not boo Ronda, but then you turn Ronda heel, so it all just seems so completely inconsequential. And Becky won the Rumble. There is no reason to have Becky fight for a right to be in Mania when she run won the Rumble. It's so, so stupid. But yes, Becky wins Triple Threat WrestleMania. What you gonna do? Anyway, that was a two count. We have this match, which, because of the return happening, no stunner. Because of the return happening here at this show, the glorious return of the big dog, this match is not going to main event, I'm sorry. We had one actual world title main eventing a co-binding pay-per-view last time. I don't see it happening this time. But the new Daniel Bryan versus... It's a three count. Kevin Owens. So Daniel Bryan versus Kevin Owens, who is returning for the first time in months as a face. And obviously Bryan is the best heel in the company right now, pretty much. And this match just kind of, they replaced Kobe Kingston, who they were going to give this match to at Fastlane. And I think they realized that people really want Kofi to win the belt. So if you're going to have that happen, why not have it happen at WrestleMania, Kofi Mania, etc etc so therefore this match is weird because usually when you have a returning superstar and it's a big deal and they're a big name you have them win their first match back but I just don't see Owens winning the belt here they're gonna have this match with Brian and Kofi at Wrestlemania it seems like the potential uh match there so Owens loses perhaps because of Eric Rowan or w whatever but by hook or by crook Daniel Bryan retains the belt. Now, we have heard that the New Day is going to be in the building for Fastlane, so that could play into the match somehow, some way, I don't know. But I think at the end of the night, Daniel Bryan is still your WWE champion, organically. And then, because as we've seen, when you don't have Brock anywhere in the area, but you have Roman Reigns on the card, the the match with Roman Reigns ends up being the main event regardless. Even when you have your actual world title on the show, Roman Reigns is more important than the world title. We've seen this in 2018, 2017, etc. This is not news, right? So certainly having your 95th Shield reunion, it's going to end up being the main events. And come on. You don't bet against the Shield. Oh, by the way, their opponents, Baron Corbin, Drew McIntyre, and Bobby Lashley. You would assume Leo Rush there somewhere, but, like, you don't bet against the Shield again and again and again and again. Betting against the Shield is like betting against a celebrity at WrestleMania. They just win. That's just what happens. So, there is literally no reason 
since Roman Reigns conquered cancer, he's not going to lose to Bobby Lashley, Drew McIntyre, and Baron Corbin. Come on. So yes, The Shield wins the six-man tag, stands tall, fists in the middle, end of the show, fans go home happy. I don't know what they do with Roman for WrestleMania, but that remains to be seen. We shall see. Moving forward. Uh, but notable by their absence on this card, Braun, Balor, AJ, Orton, not even announced on this seven-match card on a dual-branded pay-per-view. I would imagine some kind of a backstage interaction again between Orton and AJ to have their Mania match get set up. Sure. Uh, but otherwise, who knows, man. Anyway, those are my predictions for Fastlane 2019 on the road to WrestleMania, the last stop. So, like, 30-something days now until Mania. I'm hype. Hope it's a good show. I'm Attack Slug. Thanks for watching. More videos on this channel. Sub forum. See you next time. And I am out.